Bordner, and I'm here with Community Connect, and this is our very first podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. With me, I have Sarissa Powdrill. She's also with Community Council, and we are excited today to introduce you to some of our great partners at the mm-hmm. Community Connect, uh, at the Community Council. And this is really how you connect in your community. Absolutely. Today, we have James Huggins, and he is the president of United Texas Bank. So we're in the we're in the presence of royalty today. Absolutely. And we also have Karen Blaha, who is an executive vice president at the bank as well. I have to tell you that these guys have helped us so much at the community. This is really, really, really how you can connect. So how are you doing today? We're doing great. Mm-hmm. Thanks for uh, inviting us over for this uh, this podcast today. <laughs> Absolutely. We look forward to it. Thank you for having us. We sure. appreciate it. Excited to have you. So I know at the Community Council, we are this year, we have announced very, very, very recently that we are in a fight against poverty, and that's mm-hmm. what we do. We help move families forward. Mm-hmm. We leave poverty behind. Mm-hmm. Just yesterday, it was very exciting. Sarissa had a great photo shoot with six-time MMA world champion Guy Metzer, mm-hmm. and he has agreed graciously to be our spokesperson mm-hmm. for the fight against poverty. We are punching people, not people, we are punching poverty in the face. So that's what we're doing this year. We are really trying to help our families mm-hmm. and the students that we serve get ahead a little bit better. So, Carrie, can you tell me a little bit about what you guys are doing? Sure. What we're trying to do to help people get out of poverty is financial literacy Mm -hmm. and we want to start an early age for training and so they can learn children can learn how to save what banks do Mm -hmm. so they're not afraid or they don't have to go to the corner place where you go to a check cashing service and pay fees so Mm -hmm. our goal is to educate them at an early age and we also try to teach parents and help parents and teachers learn more so they can help be responsible with their money you know, my my son, he's 22 now, but uh, used to he would get an allowance, and, and we would go to the store, and then he could buy things, and then I would buy things. But when I started making him use his own money, it was like, uh, a different story. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. And then when he started working, he was like, oh, my gosh, I have to work three hours just to pay for that. I don't think I want it anymore. Mm-hmm. So it really does make a difference. Mm-hmm. It's a whole That's different good, yeah. perspective. It's the value of money. Mm-hmm. You, when you have to earn that money and work for it, mm-hmm. you realize what it means to you. Yes. When it's given to you you take it for granted mm-hmm. so it's the value of money and if we can teach it in the younger children as they grow up they have a better mindset on their spending habits got you what school districts are your programs currently we're actually targeting disd awesome. Louisville isd and collin okay. collin county isd okay. uh, we're currently in a couple of schools we started with an elementary school program mm-hmm. at ha- hamilton park elementary in richardson mm-hmm. for the fourth through sixth graders and it's been awesome. Um, so. This past year, we expanded it to the first through sixth grade students, nice. where we go out and we make a presentation to the full audience. We give each child a piggy bank and mm. talk to them about saving. And we go back every month, and the children that participate in the program, we keep up a separate accounting record for them. And then we, we pay 2% interest on their money, and now we just closed out the school year and pay, they got more money than what they put in. So Great. that's kind of a nice feedback. But what was interesting is with the fifth grade, we also celebrate like the participants who raised the most money in the class. Wow. And then we also celebrated the first graders this year because they had more participants than anybody. First so, grade. I mean, and, and sometimes uh-huh. it was just a quarter. It could mm-hmm. be so five yeah. cents. Mm-hmm. But all in all, the first through sixth graders collected a little under $2,000. So it was really rewarding. And what was interesting last year is the fourth grade class won the pizza party because they collected more money. Uh Well, it paid forward because this year the fifth grade class, those same kids, Mm -hmm. start saved more money than anybody else. So it's really helping spread. Yeah, and one of the things we also do, and Karen, you didn't mention it, but uh, 
I think they raised almost two thousand dollars and we matched that and gave that back to the teachers so that they can use that to pay for awesome. uh, some other needs, oh, some supplies oh, and that's stuff great. that the, the school that's you know, great. I'm just, just fortunate student. And I appreciate I that as a parent because I am always getting a letter saying, please send this, mm -hmm. my class needs more Kleenex, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So anytime we can help those teachers, that is great. So is there a way for if I'm a teacher at home mm -hmm. and I want to get involved, how we can do that? Actually, call me at the bank. It's Karen Blaha, or you can email me at kblaha mm -hmm. at utb.com. And my last name is spelled B as in boy, L-A-H-A. -A. That easy. Um, so it's very easy. Mm -hmm. We're very open. We, you know, we, what I need is more access to schools. And okay. principals mm -hmm. have been my primary contact. Okay. Uh, we're willing to change our program to fit each individual schools needs okay. you know like I said at Hamilton Park it started at fourth through sixth grade and they wanted to expand it we're willing to we're actually also working at Emmett J Conrad High School okay. in a work-study program and we're helping those students uh, with mock interviews mm -hmm. um, to prepare them to go out and get ready for a job awesome. we look at resumes uh, we're actually hiring an intern from that school for the summer oh, that's amazing well, that's, that's so amazing we're, it really we're is. trying to expand and get the word out yes. so thank you this is a sure. great opportunity absolutely, absolutely. here and also talk about our uh, teacher appreciation oh. we in addition um, at hamilton park we donate 500 dollars to the principal to select a teacher of the year. Aww. And so that that has just been, it was so exciting oh last year to be able to do that and it's announced in the full auditorium mm -hmm. right at the end of the school year. So that's exciting. We also help subsidize their lunch program um, because there are some children, even though mm -hmm. they don't meet the qualification mm -hmm. or the minimum guideline mm -hmm. for assistance, they still can't afford lunch. Absolutely. And so we've donated in the past approximately $1,500 each year to help subsidize their lunch program. What a local so secret. We're, oh, we're, we're trying to help. Out. So y'all yes. are helping us get the word out. Awesome. So thank you. No, thank you. Well, I'm proud to say the United Texas lot. Bank is our bank at the community council. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we came to you guys and said, hey, look, we <laughs> – we need some help here. We're trying to grow and expand and uh, really get this fight for poverty or mm -hmm. fight against poverty rolling. And you guys stepped right in there. And we are very, very, very happy to be, you know, part of the United Texas Bank family. So, James, what made you guys decide to really get involved in the community and give back this way? Well, you know, it's, it's our obligation, number one, mm -hmm. uh, to give back to the community you serve. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had great clients throughout the community. And, uh, you know, we, we uh, receive reward from that. And so trying to help and make a difference in the community, it's our responsibility to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the children, what a great opportunity to teach and, and cultivate the next leaders of our country. Mm -hmm. Do the parents get involved? Right. We try to get those involved uh, uh, through the PTA. We do the PTA oh, okay. meetings at the school mm -hmm. and the auditorium. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's not as well attended as we would like, but every year it's a little better. Good. So, yeah. But the teachers, we also do an in-service training for the teachers and mm -hmm. kind of teach the teachers. Okay. Um, and that's been very well received. Of course, you have a captive audience because they're all there anyway. That's right. But we bring lunch and, and we kind of talk to them about credit. I'm a mother of millennials, and I'm a banker. Mm -hmm. So my children had no idea about credit mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of what you need to be able to buy a yes, house and, and different things like that. So it's been very important to kind of teach the teachers mm -hmm. about credit scores and how important mm -hmm. that is because financial literacy in high school for my kids was an elective. Yeah. Well, they didn't pick it that. <laughs> <laughs> and it was an elective that in my school. That wasn't something they wanted so, to do. So yeah, it's time anyway, to it's imperative, and I think our state is actually starting to make that more of a mandatory, uh, more mandatory in their curriculum. As now. it should be, yes. Well, let me tell you how old I am. We didn't even know what fa financial literacy was when mm -hmm. I was in high mm -hmm. school. So, you know, it was like you get out of school and – see ya just bye flow you know so and then you go to college and you get seventeen thousand. you know get a credit card and we're like yes let's do that oh, let's all your student card. loans you're approved student you're loans approved. all kinds of mm -hmm. things so the, this is a very very it's needed. i really think very needed thing absolutely. absolutely how how do you keep your uh your your supporters up to date about your work let's spread you the know, word about it and this program has actually made us 
think about that. We're going to put a community board on our website awesome. and, and add, you know, snippets of different programs that we're doing. Okay. Now, we do have a big billboard in front of our building at okay. 635 in Preston on the northwest corner that kind of highlights. It has Hamilton Park. Okay. It highlights some of our bank customers that we work with oh. also oh. in terms of partnerships. Okay. And so. And Community Council has been an awesome partnership. We're so excited to be working with you guys. Well, you, definitely you can count yeah. us in for whatever that we can do because we have students. We have a uh, workforce development program mm -hmm. where students come in and we say, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And we're talking to students that are 25 to 35 years old. Yeah. Kind of made some iffy decisions, mm -hmm. maybe, or you know, life just kind of happened, and mm -hmm. they're really having to rethink what they do. And mm -hmm. so they come in, and part of their graduating from our class is that you have to go through a financial literacy component mm -hmm. as long as and also with resume building and mock interviews and that kind of thing so I, I we really really think it is very important to do uh, that that's something that we can uh, expand it's our great our, our reach on and yeah and try to help there also mm -hmm. i do have to tell you this is really what community connect is all about Absolutely. we really want to help people kind of get connected think of us as like the podcast linkedin i mm -hmm. don't know uh, i've been told <laughs> i'm the human good. linkedin i know somebody that knows somebody we can get somebody together Absolutely. so really that's what we need to do because we cannot help this community by ourselves we all have to be in this together mm -hmm. so that's what this show is really all about connecting the community absolutely mm -hmm. so sarissa what else we got going on at the council this week? <laughs> well coming up june 21st we have our steel toes and stilettos luncheon um it's uh, our first luncheon was in march we had a great turnout and we had a great panel and it touched on so many areas about our careers and women women in the workforce um area so uh june 21st we're about to uh, shed light some more and and welcome th those women into mockingbird tower and uh, kind of nail down uh, and honor a, a steel toe uh, woman officer uh, here in the community doing great things. So the theme of this lunch is? Getting fit spiritually, financially, and physically. So we have some great speakers. We have uh, an executive vice president from Toyota that's going to come in and mm -hmm. talk about things. We also have Kathleen Munger who's going to come in and really talk about why it's important that women figure out uh, how to become financially responsible. You know, I was talking to Kathleen and she was saying something about her mom and when her father passed away she didn't even know where the money was. Mm -hmm. She didn't know how to get into the bank account. She didn't know how anything and so you know it's really important that women Absolutely. as well as you know everybody else really learn how to become financially responsible. And since we're sitting here, we have the bright eyes of Miss Blaha. Can we put you on the spot and ask you to be on the, our panel <laughs> like to speak of yeah. financial literacy I as well? I would love to have the opportunity. We work, work with the Habitat for Humanity. Okay. Um, they have a great program to help people get into homes. Mm. And they, they do financial education mm -hmm. for, to, for people to qualify for a mortgage. Right. And they help them through hurdles and Unfortunately, they only build maybe 35 to 50 homes a year, mm -hmm. and they've got like a waiting list of 200 people that need homes. Wow. So I think there's wow. another opportunity for for community sure. council Absolutely. and our bank and the Habitat to work together. So. Uh, and we, we spoke, spoke about how it's, it's a little different when you have more at risk in, in your future and what I love about um, habitat of um, humanities well, mm -hmm. you're, you're part of the building you're, you're part of building your home so you have more at stake and you, you feel more confident in in your home ownership because you're a part of the building process so I love their initiative as well yeah, for us as a company we involve our employees mm -hmm. and our customers awesome. uh, our customers donate and uh, what we raise from our from what we don't or what's being raised through donations we typically, as a bank, will match the, the donation, and then we have all our staff go out, and we actually do two different mm -hmm. work days, wow. and uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a team building exercise, you know, from mm -hmm. a standpoint, but you're giving back to a great cause. Absolutely. And you're helping someone that uh, really can, that deserves help. Absolutely. And That's they're so true. flexible in terms of their yeah. schedule. Mm -hmm. like, we used to go in the summer. Well, now we go in the fall. It's a little a bit little cooler, cooler and you don't have all the rainy weather mm -hmm. because there are so many delays. But that homeowner, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. is out there working, too, because mm -hmm. they put in what's called sweat equity. Sweat equity, I love it. they are out there working and building their own home, mm -hmm. and you see that pride of ownership. That's and, right. and as a worker there, 
it's neat to meet them and their family and their desire for home ownership yes so no karen you've been with the bank for a long time so what makes you really want to continue you know doing what you're doing well in terms of my career i've been at the bank for 10 years now Mm. and i have been in the construction i'm primarily a construction lender so i loan money to builders or to people that want to build a home Mm -hmm. and that has always been a passion of mine Mm -hmm. But I've also kind of accepted this new responsibility of community reinvestment and giving back to the community. And it's kind of uh, reached a personal goal for me. Mm. So I am trying to, you know, before I retire and go on, get more people excited about the bank, about the opportunities. And, you know, we always have ample volunteers that go out to the school. So it's kind of fun to see it catch on. Yes. Uh, you Along have with uh, mentoring the younger staff, Getting back <laughs> <laughs> and understanding what that means as mm-hmm. giving back as a portion. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I know you mentioned construction, and you knew I was going to have to ask this. So you're on the corner of 635 and okay. Preston Road, and that's where the Valley View Mall mm-hmm. is, was kind of thing. So, so how are you? Are you a part of that? How are you a part of that? What's happening? Well, now? the Valley we have common ownership. Uh, the Beck family, which owns uh, Beck Ventures, which owns the Valley View Mall, mm-hmm. a portion of that, uh, also owns United Texas Bank. And so through that common ownership, that's how we're involved uh, from that standpoint. Uh, but construction has started, mm-hmm. uh, that demo, I should say, demolition. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're making great progress. Uh, so if you hadn't gotten by and taken a look, uh, better look now because uh, before too long, it'll be gone. Yeah, hold yeah. Uh-oh. So what is it going to be? What is it going to be? Well, I mean, it's going. They have a a, a, a complete development plan there. Mm. You know, there's another. There's a couple of other groups uh, that uh, that are involved with a part of the the mall, the Sears, um, and you know, all I know is going to be a lot of high end retail. Okay. It's, it'll be uh, office. It'll be um, the. I think the thing they like to say is work, play, and live Love communities. It. Right? Love it. And yeah. uh, but. For a uh, better description of everything, Mm -hmm. uh, I would recommend that you invite uh, Scott Beck, who is uh, the CEO Mm. of Beck Ventures, Mm. and he can give you a great detail of what uh, that project's really going to look like. Mm -hmm. He loves to talk about that, so that's really nice. I would love to hear. Well, you have me excited about United Texas Bank, and after today, I will wear your T-shirt everywhere I go. Well, good. We'll make you proud. Don't just wear our T-shirt. Come be one of our clients. I will. Join our family. Yes, I'm I'm so appreciative to be a part of Community Council and to know that we are uh, in partnership with you. But your initiatives are close to my heart. So thank you so much for the work that you're doing. Absolutely. You know, I always like to ask everybody this. If you could change one thing in the community, what would it be? See, James is really thinking. <laughs> I go back to the biggest thing is awareness of what's really needed. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes we get caught up in the clouds mm-hmm. and we don't think about reality mm-hmm. and we don't see the real level of what is really needed. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, again, it goes back to your personal uh, beliefs and your personal uh, initiatives. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you got to a certain level just remember how you got there and what it takes and what you have to do. Cater that back to some of the misfortunate ones mm-hmm. or some uh, someone that does didn't have some of the breaks or some of the, sure. the luck that has come your way. Mm-hmm. And, and think about it from that perspective. And if you have an open heart and a, and a giving heart, mm-hmm. and I understand that we all get asked to do tremendous amount of sure. work. Absolutely. And things, do what's important to you in your life as as a way to give back to those. And I think for me, that's what I, that's how I see it. Mm-hmm. It's very humbling when I go to these schools and talk to the students. It's so nice because my kids are all grown. Mm-hmm. I get to hug these students, get to know them. We're there every month, mm-hmm. and you do you feel you know that you're in a good partnership mm-hmm. and you work with these teachers. And what I'd like to see is. We need more schools. We want to do this. We have the resources. Mm-hmm. We want to step out. So if anybody is interested, please call me. Okay. We, we really Tell us your number. Help. It's 469-828-4231. Okay. 
That's my direct phone. So you don't care that very often we have money. We want you to call. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, really, seriously, if you know any school, any students, please give Karen a call. I mean, you, like I said, you never hear that. I have money and I want to help. So right. let's, you know, get it while the getting's good, as right. my mother would say. We'll also place uh, the information on our website at ccadvance.org um, and on our uh, events calendar to ensure that awesome. those that are looking and watching uh, stay connected. Um, I want to ask one question. Um, from this point forward, how will you be uh, mobilizing uh, your mission around the community other than your uh, staff uh, meetings and website? How can we help you with that? You can help through Synergy because everybody knows somebody. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows a school teacher. Okay. If that school teacher can help us get access to the principal, okay. the principals have been my, my primary contact. Okay. But, and we've actually gone through the process of being a, an approved vendor for DISD awesome. with our program. Yes. So, and that took some steps, mm -hmm. but we did it. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it's very exciting. Okay. And it's just, I think everybody's kind of in a box mm -hmm. and they're used to this and they're afraid to step out of their t typical program. Right. And it's not a basic. We're totally flexible with what just let us in and let us earn your, your respect and teach, teach your students. Yeah. Yeah. And if they have questions, ask them to reach out to the schools that we support. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See what kind of what kind of support we're giving, mm -hmm. what we're delivering, mm -hmm. and results that we're receiving mm -hmm. back from the from the program. Okay. It's so truly us. a give. We're giving back and we want to Absolutely give. you oh, that's are. That's great. Uh, seriously. So tell us what schools those are again. Hamilton Park Elementary. It's a magnet school in Richardson. Emmett J. Conrad High School over in the Victory Meadows area. Okay. And then J.T. Sal Saldivar Elementary is one where we do um, career days. So we go out, like recently we went out and gave all the children a piggy bank and just visited with mm -hmm. them because that was kind of what they were comfortable with about wants versus needs, budgeting, saving and kind of how what are you going to do this summer are you mm -hmm. going to get an allowance what are mm -hmm. you going to do with that money so it was just you know a very informal type visit but it, it allowed us to get in and talk to the children great that's great that's so sarissa i'm going to ask you what is the one thing you would like to change in the community or see happen in the community if you could uh, uh, more resources to free education and i i spoke that on our practice uh, so I had a time <laughs> to practice this answer, but no free more access to uh, free education programs. They're out here, and and the word is just not out enough. And again, what you do with Skill Quest every day shows uh, how imperative uh, a program for free education is to those in our community uh, to even help them uh, step by step on what to do to get your GED and to seeing those uh, um, obtaining their associate's degrees so quickly and, and how they come back with their testimony and how what SkillQuest does for them and their family. I think it, having those resources and knowing about those resources for free education is absolutely needed. Well, speaking of SkillQuest, we have a graduating class of 50 oh, students, absolutely. and they are graduating on Sat oh, on Friday? Friday? Friday, the 17th. So, yes, it's going to be a really kind of a cool thing. They mm -hmm. are getting some certifications. Some are getting their associate's degree. Some are graduating with a bachelor's degree in nursing. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing to see the transfer transformation of these people. Mm -hmm. I really think it's important. But that's just one thing that we do at the council. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, Tell us some more. We talked about uh, youth and uh, mm -hmm. connecting you with schools, our uh, community youth development program. We service about 2,500 kids a day uh, within the DISD school district. So I'm excited to take your information back to community council today and see how we can connect those uh, with the children we serve every day. Uh, but more than anything, my, my priority was completing this episode <laughs> of Community <laughs> Connect with the president of uh, United Texas, Texas Bank, <laughs> uh, but uh, also the next big step is our June 21st uh, women's luncheon. And uh, again, just being able to spread the word on the, the initiatives that we, we, we don't know anything about and getting those out there. So let me ask you, uh, what, what would you like to change in the community and what's important to you? What is important to me is that the people that serve the community are true servant leaders themselves. Mm -hmm. James and Karen are prime examples Absolutely. to that. I really, um, it's a passion of mine that what we do 
at the community council is really important and very needed. And I say that because I have a personal story. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a few years ago, I uh, was in an accident and mm -hmm. suffered a mild traumatic brain injury, and I had to learn how to walk and talk and do everything completely over again. Mm -hmm. And it was hard. I mean, I was in rehab three years, mm -hmm. and it was it was a major thing. I had a really small child, and it just shouldn't be that hard to start over. And so I kind of made it my mission that, you know, I'm going to make it easier for anybody that has to go through anything like this. Yes. And, you know, really, that story is kind of a typical story of the people that we see mm -hmm. at the community council. I mean, every day, every day. And we we really, really I, I really want the leaders in our community to understand that it's it's important for you to be a servant leader. Mm -hmm. When you're in a position of leadership, it shouldn't be about you and, you know, all about me and what mm -hmm. I can get. It should be about how I can help you or help others become leaders as well. It so that's really back. what's, you know, I'm on my soapbox today. It but all that's comes really back. what's important to me. Mm -hmm. It really does all come back. And we can't do it without volunteers and, and donors and partnerships. Mm -hmm. So if you would like to get involved with us, mm -hmm. please go to CC Connect. No, that's not, that's our CC Advance. See, she's the, she's the media person. And I also failed to mention, if we're approaching our 30 minutes, um, is uh, it's Older Americans Month. And we're selling, celebrating that with our partnership with DART at Community Council. So on Thursday, May uh, 16th at the Fair Park, it will be the Older Americans Expo with My Ride Dallas, which is also housed at Community Council, along with the Dallas Post Police Association and Aldea and a couple of other partnerships but it's perfect for our seniors in the community so uh, we're, we're serving everybody it's, it's all about good and connecting the community on on the podcast and outside the podcast so felt to absolutely mention that. so yeah, we have a seniors we, we actually seniors we, we donate funds to senior stores oh, okay. and um, last year they used the money to, to buy space heaters oh, so awesome. some of those things you just take so for granted Absolutely. but I also do. wanted to add one thing that impressed me and a lot of people don't know mm -hmm. is community council you guys have been around for almost 80 years 80 years you yes. do meals on wheels <laughs> mm -hmm. you offer so many opportunities mm -hmm. that are out there mm -hmm. so I, i'm so glad you're doing this to get thank the word you. out thank no, you thank we're you welcome. 80 years is a long time yeah. yes. i know it's almost as old as i am so <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're yes. kind of pretty close. I think I'm coming up on that. Whatever. Than they are. But no, we, you know, we, and we do partner with the senior source. We, mm -hmm. uh, you know, actually give them funding. So that's really awesome. That's mm -hmm. a great, another connection that we make. Mm -hmm. And we, so a lot of people don't know, but we do 211. Yes. And you're like, what's 211? You I would not know what 211 is unless you actually need that service. My grandma but, used to call 211. <laughs> but go ahead. No, we, Sorry. And we, no, for real. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you need, uh, you know rental assistance or if you're in some sort of emergency and you need to be connected to another agency or mm -hmm. you need to be connected to the services that the council provides 211 is where you call because mm -hmm. that is your front line of everything and they also have uh, emergency preparedness for the community so mm -hmm. if there's a tornado if there's some sort of disaster those are the guys that really connect and tell people where to go so Again, I want to thank you so much thank you. for coming. Oh, thank this you. was the for best for the opportunity. Oh, no, this was the best first <laughs> podcast ever. Uh -huh. And I'm just going to say so say your um, website one more time. It's www.u like united texas bank b as a boy.com. And we are where we community council at ccadvance.org. So help us stay connected to your community. Mm -hmm. Your tagline. And we'll keep on keeping on with connecting you with the community. So if you have initiatives that you would like to be broadcast, please give us a call or again log on to our website. Our number is 214-871-5065. And again, our website is advance ccadvance.org. I'm rubbing off on you. Yeah. Thank you so much for connecting with us today, mm -hmm. and we'll see you in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.